All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from, as I like to say here, all the way across the pond in the wow. UK, in a very beautiful part of the UK, the Cotswolds by Mike Lander. How are you doing, Mike? Hey, I'm good, John. How are you? Yeah, and Mike is a successful was a successful procurement director, entrepreneur, master negotiator who defied the odds and proved that hard work and dedication can lead to success from being told he wasn't bright enough at a, at 16 right. to raising over 6.5 million of acquisition growth capital. And um, and I mean, clearly you've moved well beyond that. Whoever told you that? Uh, <laughs> uh, please, <laughs> great, great. Great, uh, great encouragement at 16. Exactly. Uh, That's right. It, it really formed me as a young person. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're then, useless. You'll get nowhere. Oh, great. It, thanks. Uh, brilliant. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the school of hard knocks. But there we go. Um, right. And a successful, procure, you've been successful in procurement and now you work on the, on the other side as well. But I do. So what we're going to talk about today is, are you ready for procurement? Now I just triggered. <laughs> Have they all turned off, John? Have they all stopped listening? They've all they're, they're all in a cold sweat <laughs> now going, oh, no, no, not the dreaded P word. So, um, I mean, Mike, let's get into it. Let's face it, for a lot of a lot of salespeople, they've either they're, had a couple of interactions with procurement or maybe they haven't even interacted with procurement, but they've heard the horror stories. Right. And they yep. say, you know, like the minute the, the worst thing you can hear from a prospect is. I'm going to have to get procurement involved. At that point, you know, the poor salesperson <laughs> head slumps onto the desk and things, and they naturally think this is going south already. Yeah, they do. So, so tell me, why, why is that? Why, why, why is that an incorrect perception? So it's a complete myth uh, for a few reasons. So, um, if you look at kind of, so let, let me kind of first of all um, say a few things about about procurement and about what 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 we're not. So first of all. Um, we're not the devil. Yeah. So in my old role, when I was a buyer, I used to work in private equity backed companies with a mate of mine, uh, and we would sell procurement services into PE backed companies. And our job was basically, imagine where the procurement directors were working in a company, and our role is to improve profitability. So yes, mm -hmm. we've got to save cost. Yep, It's part of the agenda. But we're there to improve quality of the supply base, um, focus the supply base, on fewer suppliers so that we get more bang for our buck, basically. Uh, improve reliability, drive innovation, ensure sustainability and diversity, equity, inclusion, and manage risk. So we, we're just another stakeholder, but with a very different set of agendas. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, uh, we're not the devil. Right. Second thing is, do not stick your head in the sand when procurement's mentioned. And I'll mm -hmm. tell you why in a second. And thirdly, we're not there to kill you. Yeah? Yeah. I am so, a human being. I am real. I'm not an AI bot. I am, mm. in fact, a real person. I do have feelings. But as a procurement person, I probably don't uh, reveal those feelings as, as much as, um, as maybe one of my other stakeholder colleagues would during a right. sales cycle. Yeah. So tell me, how should, how, sh how would you, when you were doing this, when you're the procurement director, how would you like a salesperson to approach you? I mean, because obviously you're used to them coming like very guarded or reserved or thinking, oh my God, this is going to be a, this is going to be a conflict. How would you like them to, what would be an ideal way to approach procurement? So let's take a scenario, John, simple yeah. sales scenario. Yeah. Um, you're the IT services director, big company. Salesperson has been talking to you for six months about an opportunity. You've been shaping the deal together. It's worth half a million dollars. You shape it to the point whereby there's a solution design in place. You've only talked to one supplier. The salesperson then has to come and see procurement and says, hi, John sent me. He said, just go and see procurement. Mm -hmm. I go berserk going, let me just talk to John. I'll come back to you. The mistake that's happened there is obvious. Involved me at the beginning. It's a half a million dollars mm -hmm. in any company. It's a lot of money. It's going to have governance around it. So although salespeople will be shrieking at this point into their car speakers, probably, mm -hmm. um, that that's a terrible idea, engage procurement very early in the sales cycle. So 
a better way of doing that kind of uh, use case would be John says, you know, Mike's really interesting. Uh, uh, so let's start thinking about what the solution design might look like. And I say, John, ju just a second. In our experience, half a million dollars is a decent sized check to cut. Is that true, John, in your organization? Yeah, it's decent size. Mm -hmm. CFO's probably got their eyes on it. Okay. Right. Um, in my experience, what happens, John, is uh, in other companies, not necessarily in yours, but in other companies, what, what typically happens is um, procurement have a preferred suppliers list. Procurement are the only ones that can raise us as a supplier on that preferred suppliers mm -hmm. list, the PSL. And they're the only ones that can get a purchase order signed off. Is that true, John? Right. You probably go, yeah, yeah. is that right, mm -hmm. Mike? Yeah. So I'd go, well, why don't we get them involved now? Why don't we just check that they haven't got an existing supplier that they think can do this already? Why don't we just check that, you know, they're not doing some consolidation exercise on the category, which would knock us out as being a potential supplier? And why don't we just check if they've seen this problem before and they've solved it before? Let, let's have a conversation with them. Can you arrange it, John? Would that be okay? Just 15 yeah. minutes would be great. So, so Mike, if somebody does that, if, when you were doing procurement, like if if somebody had that approach, and you know your your internal stakeholder came to you and said, "Oh, I'm working. I've started talking to this company. They want to talk to you now, like before we progress too far." What what? How would that change your approach? So, what I first of all do is I'd say, John, thanks for coming to come and see me. Um, my job is to build relationships with internal stakeholders. So, first of all, thanks, John. It's great you, you came to see me. Um, then I'd start talking about the category. John, let's just look at the category a second. We currently spend $50 million on tech at the mm -hmm. moment uh, as a business. Um, this is a half a million dollars, so it's still material. Can you just talk to me about where this fits? Because I can then talk to you about our category strategy for buying tech. So we have a category strategy, like you have a sales strategy. Yeah. We have a procurement category strategy. Category is technology. And then we talk about the strategy. And then you'd know what I'm doing. I'd know what you're doing. We'd mm -hmm. all know where it fits. And I'd say, okay, they sound interesting. They're innovative. They're, you know, they're a 30, 50 people company. They might be Series A founded, or they might be, you know, they might be up at uh, uh, the first round of past angel, but they've yeah. got some credibility, decent size. Um, they've got some other case studies in our industry. Sure. Sounds interesting. Why don't we have a 15 minute conversation with them just to have a meet and greet? And the positioning. Yeah, and you see, for me, it, it, that's all. As you said, I mean, you're 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 starting this from the beginning. You're involving the people. You understand. And I think the great thing that you've already probably a lot of people listening to this, as we said at the beginning, their idea of procurement is procurement is just there to bring the price down. Exactly. But you've just said there, procurement has has strategies for different categories of purchases and all of that. Yeah. And and I think. And I think that's probably the first place for a salesperson to start is to go, okay, the, the procurement person is a, is, a, is a strategist as well. You know, they've got great insights. You know, they're not just there because sometimes we just think, oh, they just dump somebody in there to drive the price down. We're saying, no, these are professionals with a lot of great insight. And if I can, if I can harness those insights, it's going to help me during this process. Correct. They used to be called, so there's two types of procurement people you might meet. Um, some are called purchasing mm -hmm. and some are called strategic sourcing. Now, on most podcasts, we don't talk about it because yeah. you obviously understand the uh, the function, you know how it works. Um, strategic sourcing is all about the category strategy. It's all about how are we going to manage $50 million of technology spend? Which suppliers are we going to start kind of working with? Which ones don't we want to work with? How are we going to consolidate? How do we maximize our, our value for money? How do I manage risk? So you want to be talking to the strategic sourcing lead. That's who you want to talk to. The purchasing person, like in really big organizations, big banks, mm -hmm. they'd have a purchasing department. Often it's offshored because it's more cost effective with right. a technology backing. Um, and it would be raising purchase orders. It'd be checking invoices on POs, doing a three-way match, doing a lot more of the kind of volume-based work, whereas strategic sourcing is finding new suppliers, consolidating supply bases, uh, doing all that good stuff. So yeah, there are two sorts of people that exist. The mm -hmm. other thing, John, for your um, your audience is, uh, let's say you follow the first path. So you're going to talk to a procurement person right yeah. up front. Look at their LinkedIn profile, obvious. People are like, well, yeah, so what, Mike? Look at where they've come from in procurement. 
if they've worked in Walmart buying bananas, apples, oranges, fruit juice, and now they're buying technology services in the last year, don't be surprised of two things. They won't know much about tech, but they'll be really, really well-trained <laughs> negotiators. Yeah. And they'll be super efficient and possibly on the verge of being aggressive. <laughs> because every cent they save on buying a million bananas makes a difference. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. And uh, there's legendary those uh, those stories about people going down to uh, to Walmart, wherever that place is. I can't remember, but um, you know, having their having their you know five minute to pitch their product, and then they're told, yeah, yeah it's a good product, but it's too big. Uh, you're gonna have to shrink that box by six inches. Yeah. And there you go. Exactly. <laughs> so look out on the website. Look at look at LinkedIn. Um, they'll if they've been in, so what we call it is if you're buying goods that people buy in the shops, that's goods for uh, goods for resale, mm -hmm. direct procurement. They're in direct procurement. If you're buying IT, marketing services, cleaning services, infrastructure, typically we call them indirect procurement people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Big difference between the two. Both valuable, different types of people. Yeah. And what would, when you were procurement, what would, when somebody engages you, what would make you say, okay, these people look like they're, they're they're clued in you know they've done their homework i mean wh what what are some of the tells that you would look for that these are people that you think are would be good to work with so um number one they're not selling to me right. if you start selling to me it's a disaster <laughs> number two these are sales people i'm talking about so yep. probably counterintuitive um don't start selling to me number two they are fantastic problem solvers and collaborators they're very very good uh, understanding the complexity of our and of our situation, um, working out what the true problem statement is that we're trying to solve, um, jointly building solutions collaboratively together um, that add value to the client and obviously add value to us as a supplier. Mm -hmm. So they're collaborators, they're partnership builders, they are they're what uh, Matt Dixon would call the consultative seller. Remember right. the the the, the, uh, the challenger sale yeah, yeah. that model. Um, and mm -hmm. Jolt, same sort of stuff. Um, Matt would say, yeah, that th these are consultative sellers. Right, right. And 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 as part of that, then when you've seen like salespeople engage like that consultatively, really, you know, respectfully, I would probably yeah. say that's in there. Um, how how often have you seen the solution that comes out the other end, you know, be better for everyone? Uh, I I would probably say ninety five percent of the time. Mm -hmm. Very 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 rare. It's not better for both. Right. So there's a great lesson there immediately for anybody listening here is that if you approach procurement in the right way, get them involved early, you approach them as they are they are people that you can work with, who can help you. And together you can you can build, you know, you can probably have a better outcome uh, if you engage them in that way and just don't see them as as gatekeepers, see them as a necessary and and additive part of the process. Correct. So, John, let me let me kind of ask you something else. Yes. I'll be I'll be surprised if you've heard of this, mm -hmm. but have you heard about the Kraljic matrix? No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm not surprised because procurement people would have done um, because so salespeople, it's important to understand what the Kraljic matrix is. Follow on from that last conversation about collaboration, problem solving. This guy Kraljic, I don't know who I don't know who he or she was. Don't know. Um, but uh, they built this little matrix which has two simple axes. So if you're listening and you're driving in the car, um, just think about two simple axes. On the horizontal, it's called supply risk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the vertical is profit, profit impact on the buyer, on us as an organization buying. As a seller, you want to have a high impact on our profit and you want to be very scarce almost unique in the marketplace, i.e. your supply risk to me as a buyer, the supply risk is high, yeah? Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to find, that's risky. There aren't yeah. many of them around. You know, the, the solution's complex. If you're in the supply risk is high and profit impact on the buyer is high, you are a strategic item. Therefore, I'm bound to collaborate with you because it's mm -hmm. really important to us right. and it's going to take partnership to solve a problem. Now imagine John where you don't want to be. 
There are thousands of suppliers out there who all do the same thing. And the profit impact on me is very, very low indeed. It's not worth my time. Mm -hmm. We might buy a decent amount of it, but it's a non-critical item. Non-critical items, it's a commodity purchase, yep. highly competitive. It's a race to the bottom. Yeah. And let's face it. I mean, today, especially with technology, with SaaS and everything like that, we are, we we feel that we can swap things in, in and out very easily, very quickly. If, exactly. So if you're if you're, com if you're commodity, if you're a commodity or perceived as a commodity, I might switch next week for the sake of a dollar. Who knows? Yep. I mean, for the fake sake of a, I like that. It looks a little nicer. Precisely. Exactly. If the switching costs are low, if the barriers to entry are low, um, good old you know, classic kind of like Porter's Five Forces stuff. Mm -hmm. Then as a buyer, it's like, it doesn't matter really what I pick because it's got low impact on us anyway, and I can switch easily. Don't be mm -hmm. in that box. As a yeah. seller, if you're going for sales jobs, do not be a salesperson in a commodity business unless you really, really understand that commodity at some scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so then, basically, as you were saying, there is you want to be perceived as you want to get into that category of being a strategic, uh, a strategic purchase by the organization, something that's fitting into a strategic plan, something that's seen as as being import as as being critical or important. Exactly. Um, and and that's where you want to be. So, therefore, the engagement that's where procurement can help you get to. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So something else, John. So again, as a salesperson, just I, I always think as an audience, when I'm mm -hmm. driving in the car, which is what I typ typically do with podcasts, I'm looking for something practical that I can get hold yep. of. And I know that's your style. Mm -hmm. And we've given a few things already that people can think about. But something else then as a salesperson is you get this RFP or you get yep. a ITT or whatever it is, a document that's come from someone formal in an organization. Um, qualification. So if, I've run, if I'm running a process in procurement and I've written this document called an RFP and I sent it out, I sent it out probably to seven or nine suppliers, yep. probably. So if you receive it and you're qualifying it, my experience with salespeople is pipelines often a little bit weak, weaker than they want. So they want to bid for everything. Yep. Here's some obvious signs of things that you probably shouldn't bid for, I suspect. See if these resonate, John. Tell me yep. if they're on the mark or not. The RFP says you can't meet the economic buyer or procurement until um, you're shortlisted down to three and you're presenting. You can't have a meaningful discussion. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's a non-starter, that one immediately. Exactly. It yeah. has to be, doesn't it, John? It's got, it's got yeah. to be. The yeah. idea that I, as a procurement person, can write everything down succinctly in a document that my stakeholder has told me and get you to bid without any discussion yep. on a complex problem is frankly bonkers. Yep. Yeah. And and you should be saying that that's not a good use of my time. That's an investment. And you should be looking at here is if I'm going to bid on this, I'm going to invest X amount of time for right now. I have no line of sight into whether this is even winnable. Correct. Exactly right. So the next thing, um, they won't tell you who you're competing against. It's a completely blank canvas. They haven't told you who the competitors are. But worse, you happen to know there's an incumbent supplier and they are also bidding. Would mm -hmm. you bid or not, John? No, 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 not if I don't know the others. And if there's an incumbent uh, supplier that's bidding, you know, then basically my antenna would be up and would say, this may be just a renewal process here. And somebody told, told the organization, we're not just going to renew with the incumbent. Uh, yeah. We're going to look at a few others and then, you know, hopefully we'll get a better price. Exactly. <laughs> the That's also a no. There we are. Yeah. Um, so uh, the the data that I've got says, um, and this is from various, various sources, um, industry sources, when the incumbent bids, they win over 65% mm, of imagine. the opportunities. So it's, it, it, you're off to a very, very bad start. And then another one just for kicks. Um, is let's say you're currently, as a salesperson, your business focuses on healthcare and you're an excellent uh, healthcare, let, let's say healthcare CRM. Yeah. You happen to be a healthcare CRM specialist. Um, and this RFP comes in and it's looking for a CRM solution, but they're in the automotive sector. Mm -hmm. And it states, please give us three examples of credentials um, that you can validate where you've worked with someone like us. Would you bid? 
No, no, not if you were not if you were not if you're vertically focused and you have it. I mean, it it makes no sense to go outside of your your vertical focus. And as a buyer, I'm always fascinated if you've worked in health and I'm in automotive. The read across is always interesting. I'm always interested in the parallels between <laughs> sectors. But the reality is, I will not risk you walking into my organization, meeting my stakeholders, and bouncing off the wall because you don't understand automotive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then start relating to, uh, I had an experience one time, I'll be honest with you, I had an experience one time when I was with a salesperson and uh, we were dealing with a, a company that did rocks, they literally all different types of rocks, right? Right. And unfortunately, the sales per they asked the salesperson about something and they started talking about a client of, of ours that they had, but was in the med devices area, right? right? Yeah. And literally, after a few minutes, literally, one of the people said, <laughs> But we sell rocks, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and I was sitting there just going, I don't think there's any coming back from this. But anyway. I don't think there's any way back from that conversation. It's been <laughs> nice to meet you. We shall move on. <laughs> so, John, I'm, I'm conscious of your time. Yeah. What, yeah. Else, what else do your audience want to know about procurement that they yeah, might? Yeah, I would just um, just one 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 last thing is uh, one last thing is uh, why should you be why should you actually welcome. I mean, we talked a lot about this, but I mean, how, how, how would you advise salespeople just to change their thinking and, and actually want to work with welcome procurement into the process? So I think what I would say is, um, first of all, take the pressure off. During an RFP process, you can't form a meaningful relationship with procurement. There's mm -hmm. governance and I won't let you. So yeah. on your list, on the wall, most salespeople have like their top 20 targets. We want to work with these top 20 clients. Yeah. Well, so I'd start by going, okay, in my engagement plan, have I got procurement on the list? Find the procurement lead in those top 20 clients and engage them 12 to 18 months ahead of a deal. Mm. And just start to engage them on LinkedIn. Very simple tactic. Find them on LinkedIn, follow them, ring the bell so you get notified. When they write something, make a meaningful comment. Yeah. Do that five or 10 times and then maybe message them going, John, seen your post, really interesting. I've, we, we might have a point of view as an industry on what's going on in your sector based on our experience. Should I send you our thought leadership paper? Would that yeah. be okay? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's great, great advice, Mike, uh, you know, getting in early, get, building that. One comment I would make is uh, if you're going to engage with them on LinkedIn and if they do, if they have posted something and you're going to comment, please don't comment great post. Exactly. Because oh if you do, because if you if you comment great post, I know immediately that you've not read it. Correct. You are <laughs> and in the, my graveyard list of people never to talk to. Exactly. Exactly. Read it. Actually, comment on something that's in the in the text. Add drives on me nuts, it. John. Drives oh, yeah. me mad. Drives exactly. me mad. It really is. So that's my uh, my uh, advice: is don't when you see yourself typing out great post, <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Just stop. <laughs> Just stop and go back and read it. Well, listen, Mike, this has been fantastic. All of Mike's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Sure. Um, so, uh, Mike Lander, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm always on LinkedIn. Um, and on Piscari, our website, Piscari, P-I-S-C-A-R-I.com. Um, sign up to our insight series. We don't have a newsletter per se. We have an insight series. Lots of sales tips like this, John. And what I do is uh, I'm an ex-buyer that works with salespeople. I help you qualify better. I help you convert more. I help you meet quota. I help you negotiate better deals, all through the eyes of an ex buyer. Yeah, and and that's such a and that's such a, such invaluable uh, perspective to have to have somebody who was on the other side of it. So, <laughs> I'd encourage you to go out check out Mike's work. Listen, thanks again, Mike. Thank you for watching, listening. Yeah.